can't believe it's been 10 years, baby. You know, when I first fell in love with you, everybody thought I was making a huge mistake. They thought I was crazy. But 10 years later, we've been through some ups and downs, but look where we are. And I know that they all want you as much as I have always wanted you. To another 10 years, I can't wait to see what the future holds. Love, Chris. Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here for DP Review. You might be wondering what was going on with that anniversary card. Well, it's an important anniversary because it's 10 years since the announcement of the then brand new Micro Four Thirds system. And coming up to Photokina, it'll be 10 years since the announcement of this camera that we're looking at today, the Panasonic DMC G1. This was meant to directly compete against SLRs and their optical viewfinder, albeit giving you a much smaller, more compact package because of the new Micro Four Thirds format. So we're going to play with this camera today, have some fun with it, and go back in time and see how far have we come in 10 years. Now, of course, I say compact, but I'm rocking the huge 42.5mm 1.2 lens on here. Of course, that did not come with it, was not available. It came actually with the 14 to 45, and you also had a 45 to 200 lens available as the first two zooms, and they really did represent a nice compact package. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the body design. For better or for worse, Panasonic decided with the G1 to make a very SLR style body. When they came out with the GF1 shortly thereafter, that actually proved to be the more popular body style. That camera was a real hit, and I think that's partly due to its retro looks and also the fact that it had that 20 mil lens that came with it, gave it an even smaller profile. But still, nowadays, this body design hasn't really changed that much. I mean, you look at a GH5 today or G7 or G85, they're all very similar. You can see where the family looks come from. Now when the Panasonic G1 came out, it represented something very unique because this was an SLR-like camera with you know, the promise of manual control and decent image quality, but it had a workable EVF. And so now we had a creative photographic tool, but it gave us the electronic preview. Having your shutter speed effect as a preview was a huge thing. Be able to see what your exposure is actually gonna look like in a proper viewfinder was amazing. You gotta remember that SLRs did have live view, but it was a terrible interface to use. You also have to remember the G1 came out amidst the Nikon D700 craze, the Canon 5D Mark II is about to hit shelves, and of course all the huge industry of video and stills hybridization that that camera created. So this camera had a lot to fight against. And it was actually the GF1 being with its more compact, exciting body and that smaller lens that really caught people's attention. But I always loved this camera. You know, as for handling on the G1, I actually found this to be one of the most comfortable grips ever, even though it was so compact it was like it was made for my hand and actually the g1 had really amazing controls uh, you know articulating screen nice autofocus control proper mode dial i love the click switches for on off and continuous and a lot of this stuff has been used again but this was really a very thoughtful interface when it first came out there were still some things that they didn't quite get right so let's go and shoot the camera and we'll talk about that after you use it for a little bit So we're just having a walk through the park here and we've been lucky enough to stumble across the Alberta Chinese Zither Association. They've been very kind to let me just take photos and have access shooting around. So we're just doing some neat stuff with the camera. One thing though, of course I'm trying to stay quiet because we're playing such beautiful music and the shutter on this camera is very loud. It cuts through like a knife. I just want to point out here, you know, Jordan and I, when we get an old camera like this, we both go shoot it because it's just so much fun. It's like a blast from the past, you know, and uh, we took it out. We did a few days of shooting with it separately. And our main takeaway is actually it's a very contemporary camera in its feel. But what does suck on this camera? Well, certainly the continuous autofocus is brutal. Like, you know, tracking kids, tracking pets, it just wasn't there. Single point to point is fantastic, but everything else it really lacks. Also, the old TFT screen technology on the back, it's 
it's rough. I mean, you know, you can't see anything in bright sunlight, you know, no touchscreen interface. It really was just very primitive in comparison. And the EVF, although for the time quite large and bright, has a lot of RGB tearing. You didn't notice it back then because it was all you had, but now you certainly do see the difference. Overall though, the camera performs very nicely. And I can think of a lot of cameras in recent memory that honestly weren't this well thought out. So I've just been informed by one of the directors here at the garden that this is a Ligularia and it's a good autofocus test because it's pretty brutal on this camera. Now that being said again, the autofocus was decent, but we gotta remember it's 10 years old. So I don't have a direct way to really move my focusing point around. I can set it for direct AF to hit the autofocus button and change it quickly. That's not bad, but you know, I don't have a joystick control. I don't have a touch screen or anything like that, but the single point focus worked okay. It wasn't a very fast camera either for continuous shooting. Three frames per second, barely, JPEG mode only, lots of screen blackout. This is where the camera shows its age. Now Panasonic have actually built up a very well-deserved reputation for cameras with exceptionally good battery life as mirrorless cameras go. And the G1 was no exception. It had a brand new custom lithium battery and it gave you around 350 shots, which of course at the time was met with a lot of resistance. I mean, if you're coming from a DSLR and you saw that kind of number, you were just like, that. There's no way I'm switching over. But then consider that in the last 10 years, even to today, uh, an entry-level mirrorless camera rarely gives you more than 350 shots on a battery charge. So kudos to Panasonic. You know, we are finally realizing though, after this whole decade, batteries in the higher end mirrorless models, which are competing with SLRs. Hey, it's Jordan to talk about video capabilities on the Panasonic G1. We've come a long way in 10 years, but it's funny how much they got right, right out of the get-go. I mean, we've got an electronic viewfinder, this fully articulating screen here, which is wonderful, but there were some things that really annoyed me about this camera. For starters, no microphone jack on it, something that we still see missing from cameras today. And while it had a full swivel screen, there was no touch functionality on it. So setting your autofocus point, still kind of a hassle. And there was one other thing that really bothered me about this camera. Uh, maybe that it has no video. That's, that's exactly it, that this actually can't shoot video. Panasonic was so determined to go after the DSLRs for stills that they ignored probably the biggest strength of mirrorless in my opinion, which is being able to use one camera to shoot great stills and video capture. And we wouldn't see that until the Panasonic GH1 where they'd actually embrace that. And that's really been the strongest thing in Panasonic's lineup ever since. You know, so after talking about all this and with the G1 being actually a very well thought out camera considering it was the first, why didn't it do very well? I think, you know, really the fact is it was too close to an SLR. People were really fascinated with the ultra compact nature of it. But even then, you know, cameras like the Olympus EP1 that did well commercially were half baked. And I think people just liked cameras like the GF1 and the EP1 as secondary bodies to their more powerful SLR. It really took a long time for people to warm up to the idea of mirrorless. And it took an even longer time for SLR users to admit that maybe mirrorless cameras had something that their cameras didn't. So, you know, really this whole point of this video is what have we done in 10 years and why has it changed so much? I think back then the G1, although incredibly well designed, faced a lot of issues common with many mirrorless cameras at the beginning. For example, although the EVF was pretty good for the time here, compared to an optical viewfinder and SLR, it still didn't compete. You had problems like slow continuous shooting. Three frames per second is okay, but with viewfinder blackout and the inability to see where your autofocusing point is and stuff, an SLR is just going to destroy this when it comes to wildlife sports and professional photography. Photography. Also things like ruggedness and reliability, battery life that we talked about. These are all huge hurdles to overcome and it still made SLRs very appealing. On top of that, I think the real challenge that Panasonic and Olympus have faced directly is the four-thirds sensor. People have been using four-thirds sensors for a while with them and you know they were largely poo-pooed for having poor low light performance and low megapixel resolution, like the 12 megapixels on this sensor. And that didn't change for a long time. In fact, arguably Panasonic and Olympus are still facing that challenge challenge today. But in the end, I think it's a very positive thing. I mean, we've got to give credit to Panasonic for being an industry leader and for the other companies that are entrenched in mirrorless like Olympus and Fuji for also building some very unique and very beautiful cameras over the last 10 years. And you know, really honestly, uh, unlike the famous song, video in this case really saved the mirrorless star because Panasonic came out with the GH1, the two, the three, the four, and then the five. And these cameras have really cemented mirrorless as the ultimate hybrid camera and won over 
lot of video shooters. And that brings us to today, where we now have mirrorless cameras with excellent battery life, equal or better image quality, a lot of lens selection. And now we enjoy mirrorless cameras today that are, in my opinion, going to outdo SLRs, if not today, very shortly in the years to come. So be sure to check out our Twitter and Instagram feeds and let us know over the last 10 years how digital photography has changed for you. We'd love to hear that story. Don't forget, you can go to deepyreview.com and see the original Panasonic G1 review. And I just want to leave you with this thought. You know, this whole point of this video over the last 10 years, I think we've now reached a point where SLRs, although they'll never disappear, have had their time and it really is now going to be the time of mirrorless cameras and on that note we're going to be coming back to you with some uh, excellent reviews on some very state-of-the-art mirrorless cameras soon so until next time see you soon